What's going on guys, I bring another tutorial in Adobe Premiere Pro CS6. In this video, it's gonna be more of an intro tutorial for people just getting started with the software. So let's get started, I'm gonna select new project. Now if you're not familiar with this area of Premiere Pro, this is where you can give your project a name and also set the sequence settings. So first we're gonna call this tutorial and I have the tutorial folder selected. Scratch disk are the area where all the preview files get saved. Just make sure this is away from your operating system. So this looks fine to me and I'm gonna select okay. Now I use digital SLR because I record with the DSLR camera. If you have a different camera, you're obviously gonna have to look for the sequence settings that match your camera. Now I'm gonna select 720p, 60 frames per second. You can see all the information over here. Just make sure that you match with what you're recording in because that's what's gonna give you the best quality of video possible. 720p, you're gonna record in the 720p sequence setting. Obviously the same thing for 1080p. We're gonna leave the sequence name alone and I'm gonna select okay. So this is what it looks like when you create a project in Premiere Pro. I'm gonna go file import to select a video. Right away the video goes into the project panel. I'm gonna take this video and I'm gonna bring it onto the timeline. If you select video that doesn't match your sequence settings, Premiere Pro will ask you if you wanna change the sequence settings to match your video. So just make sure those things match when you're working with Premiere Pro. Next thing I'm gonna do is mute the audio because that's gonna be a little bit annoying. Now the first thing you notice are all these tools over here. If you don't have this panel open, you go Window and select Tools. This is going to allow you to edit your video. A very common task in Premiere Pro is actually to cut the video. So I'm going to select C on my keyboard, or you can select the Razor tool over here. Left click on the video, now I'm going to select V, or you can select the Selection tool here. And we can move our video around. Now what people think when they're doing this, especially if you're going to delete a portion of video, they think they removed the video. You kind of did, but what you didn't do is you didn't really delete it because what I can do here is just bring the video back. And now the complete video is there. And let me show you that one more time. I cut a portion of video, and then I can bring it back. So it doesn't get really deleted, it's just removed from what you can view on the timeline. Control Z, Control Z, and I'm just undoing what I just did. Now a lot of times when you're working with Premiere Pro, you want to see really quickly what you were doing or you want to export the video to see the quality of your editing. This is to adjust the actual rendering area. So you just left click and you can expand this and adjust the area. Very convenient, especially if you're working with video that has a lot of footage in it and you just want to test out other areas. Over here we have the snap. This is a great feature in Premiere Pro. If I don't have this selected and I'm going to cut video right there. This doesn't snap together. But once I have this selected, I'm gonna bring the video and it snaps to the video next to it. That way the videos lock into each other and there's no space between. We can also adjust the view here and we can get a better view of the video. You just left click and expand this and adjust it so you can get either a closer view or a view further away. If you want to rename a layer on the timeline here, right click, select rename. You can also hide the video over here. That way you can work with other videos and it's not interfering with what you're doing. You can also double click on the video and you can also make adjustments here. So I'm going to close this out. A popular thing for people to do when especially working with YouTube is to export a frame so it's a thumbnail for your video. You can select this camera option here. This is export frame. And you have format options. For YouTube, it's going to be JPEG or PNG. This will allow you to export a 1280 by 720 image for your thumbnail for your video. Or if you just want to export for another reason, you can too. Select OK. A popular transition, especially if you're working with Premiere Pro, is adjusting opacity. So we're going to come over here to Effects Controls, select Opacity. I'm going to go to the beginning of the video. I'm going to bring this to zero move this along the timeline, and then increase it to 100. That way it sets two keyframes, press spacebar, and that gives me a preview. And you see the transition with the opacity. You can also use a drop down, and you can adjust this. If you move the keyframes closer, again, it works faster, press spacebar, so transition happens a lot quicker. Separate them, and it takes more time for the transition. You can also add motion, if you wanted to. So we're going to set a keyframe over here for the original position. I'm 
press spacebar, and the video slides in. Now, if you wanted to have rolling text, say for credits, I have a tutorial for that. So I'm just gonna select the fault still for this one. And the area it's covering is 1280 by 720. We can call this tutorial, select okay. Select the type tool, call that Adobe Easy. There's a bunch of styles in Premiere Pro. I have another tutorial on that, how to work with text in Premiere Pro. But this gives you a basic idea of what you can do. Now that we have the tutorial title here, we can bring it onto the timeline. By just bringing the mouse here, you can adjust how long you want the text to appear in your video. I'm gonna play the audio for two seconds here, but let me select audio so it's playing. Select um, spacebar. So you see the green there in the actual video, that's the level of your audio. When you have it set at zero, that's the normal audio level for your video. If you have to, you can decrease it or you can increase it. You'll get a higher volume for your video. So select zero and that's at normal. This is the master volume level. This is gonna adjust the level of volume for all the tracks. I would suggest having the volume level somewhere in the middle so it's not too high, it's not too low. Obviously, you don't wanna have anything distorted or have you know volume that's not loud enough. One of my most popular tutorials in Premiere Pro is for a frame hold. So I'm gonna cut this video here. I'm gonna show you this really quickly. I just cut two portions. I'm selecting this video in the middle. Right click select frame hold and it's going to hold on end point so that gives you a freeze frame and if you want to you can expand this on how long the frame holds and that's what it does it just holds the frame now another trick in premiere pro is when you preview your video sometimes people will have it set to full and that's why your video might lag in premiere pro especially when you're trying to edit so I have it set at one fourth so that the quality of video is lower in Premiere Pro when you're editing, just in the preview window. Doesn't mean the video that you export is gonna be low quality, but what you'll notice is that it's gonna be a lot easier and be a lot faster when you edit video in Premiere Pro. So there's not gonna be lag when you're trying to make the edits, especially in the preview window. By the way, a new feature in CS6 is when you actually select a video, you see over here I can scrub through the video. And you get more of a preview of the videos rather than having to do all of it on the timeline. So let me show you guys how to add effects. One of the basic things in Premiere Pro is to add an effect to the video. So we're going to come over here to Window, select Effects. And in the Effects panel you have different options for adjusting the video. But I'm going to quickly show you a transition because this is something popular a lot of people like to do. I'll select a 3D motion and let's select Cube Spin. So I'm going to press C, I'm going to cut a piece of the video, take the Cube Spin, left click and hold on to the effect and we're gonna bring it right here. So I have the effect right here, I'm gonna double click on it, and this is where we can adjust the effect. This is where it shows the cube spin where it ends, and this is where it starts. Press spacebar, test this out. And it's just making little adjustments, but by default, I actually like the effect. And you can also take the effect right here and expand it. So let me show you how to export quickly. Go File, Export, Select Media, now I have the entire video selected in the rendering area. Over here you can decrease the rendering area. I'm gonna have it in the entire rendering area. My format is set at QuickTime. This is the default that I use for my YouTube videos. If you wanna select a different format, you can just select it over here. The preset, 720p. Again, if you want to select a different format, you can. Over here you select the output name and you can also change the location of where you save your video to. And when you're ready, you can select export and render your video. So that's my first intro tutorial on Adobe Premiere Pro CS6. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You guys can sign off in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys later. Cheers.